So we woke up today in Reedsville, and I need to shave because I look like a hobo. So let's get that taken care of. the world looking like a uh, normal human, not some bum that lives on a sailboat. So we're anchored just off the point in Reedville, and as far as the charts that we have tell us, we're pretty much as far in as we can make it with our keel. The problem is uh, there's a lot of big ships that come through here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of fishing boats that come through, and then there's also the ferry that takes people out to Tangier Island. And they're really big and they are like zipping past us with maybe about 10 feet of clearance between us and them and they're going through it like you know five or six knots so we're getting a little freaked out uh, and we want to move but the problem is we don't know exactly how far and what direction we can actually go because the charts simply don't have soundings at those distances so I'm going to take an old lead weight from a diving belt and I'm going to make our own little sounder and then with the sounder we can go along and actually see you know where we can go. So I'm simply going to tie the rope through this guy. We'll tie it so that it sits flat and then we'll just put uh, knots every fathom which is uh, every six feet and then we can just go along in the dinghy which doesn't draw anything and you know drop the sounder in and see how deep it is in any direction we need to go. line so the weight will simply hang here I did a bunch of wraps that way it hangs relatively flat and doesn't change much and instead of tying a knot here I did a splice that way this dimension will not change because if this changes then our whole sounder becomes off by whatever the change is so if it's tied with a knot you run the risk of someone untying it and then retying it for whatever reason with a splice it's just not that easy to do and then every fathom there's a knot. So we just count how many knots roll out and with that we have a general to rough idea of how deep the water is. So I'm going to take Morty to shore and while we're doing that I'm actually going to sound the bottom in the direction where we'd like to get out of the way of the channel or where all these boats are coming through. It's not a marked channel but it looks like the locals are using it as a channel and have made it very clear that we're in the way. So. We're going to sound it out and see how much further out of the way we can get with our deep keel. The sounder is marked uh, with knots every fathom. The most important one for us is the first fathom because that's what we actually draw. The second fathom is because we like to have a full fathom under our keel. And then from then on it's, you know, I just made it out to five fathoms, which is about uh, 30 feet. So uh, let's start marking. With a new depth sound they're made, what I'm doing, I'm just rowing along and I just drop the line in until it hits and then I look and see how many knots are in the water. So in this case, it stops pretty much at the two knot mark, which is two fathoms, or equal to 12 feet. So I found an area where I think we can anchor safely and uh, made sure there's plenty of room for us to swing by just going around and doing various soundings and now I'm just making my way back to the boat so I'm pretty much running a route that I plan on taking the boat up that route. Uh, sadly there's no charts or maps or anything where I can mark down where I want to take the boat it's just visual reference points. So 
was raise the anchor up and then eyeball it in to the area where I thought was a good spot. We'll drop the hook there and then we'll have plenty of room to swing and be out of the way of the fishing boat traffic. So let's take another sounding here. So we just row along, cover a bit of the ground here, and then put the oars in to stop the boat. It's important to stop the boat, otherwise the line's running off at an angle. And then you just let it down until it hits, and we're two fathoms again. And then we do it again and again until we make it back to the boat. Back on the boat, I remember the visual markers from when I was in the dinghy, sounding everything. So I'm following the depth sounder on the boat, making sure that it corresponds with my memory of how deep it was based on the visual markers. So the chart plotter is currently off because it doesn't offer us anything. Uh, it doesn't have soundings this far into the creek. So we're just going based off of memory from the soundings we just got. And we are almost at the spot where I wanted to drop the hook which gives us plenty of room to swing and all the good things. We're coming back here because it was really good and we met some other cruisers who also want to come here. <laughs> so we're coming back to Tommy's. So, uh, we've eaten and we actually met up with two other cruisers, which was awesome and had drinks with them. So that's the beauty of cruising. You just meet each other and say, let's get a drink and talk boats. And it's really awesome because you have all this stuff in common and all this stuff to talk about. So we enjoyed that. And now we're gonna go back to the boat, walk Morty, and have a nice relaxing evening. When we're anchored at night, we have the anchor light on, which is all the way at the top of the mast. And it looks kind of like a star if you didn't realize it's an anchor light. And we've had some boats cut really close to us at night and I just wonder is it that they just don't see where our bow and stern is or are so uh, I made these little loops I simply spliced the line through it and then connected it with a short splice that way it's all nice and smooth and they're solar lanterns so I have one hooked on the bow and this one's gonna hang off the stern and we just turn them on this one's got pretty much no charge because it's been stored inside for like a year. But uh, it'll charge up with the sun and then they're nice and bright and they'll mark the front and back of the boat because that's one nice thing that uh, cargo ships have. They have the running lights and all and then they have these two white lights and it's, it's just nice to see where these ends are on like a 400 foot boat. So in our case when someone comes into the anchorage they'll know where we start and where we end. Hi Morty! Ready to go to lunch? Yes, you are. <laughs> so, I'm like, I'm going to need to people's emails. Hello. Oh, huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I got Sammy's cage down here because it was full of fruit flies. Gross. Yeah, so we. Good, Sammy. So we put the cage outside, let it sun out and kill the bugs. So now we brought it back in. Bye, shiny girl. Got some guys here that are almost ready. So we are going to go to lunch today at that place right there. Read about it on TripAdvisor and they said it was like a little gem, so let's try it out. You, you pull the straight line. Yeah, just... Oh, snaps. Maddie bent her thumbnail back a while ago, and now it just came off. Oh. Now it just unwraps. Yep. 
So we're gonna drop scoop just in case the wind picks up while we're away. Thanks, babe. And Morty is off. <laughs> <laughs> Not waiting for <laughs> Our tomatoes are better. They have character. We had a really nice picnic lunch uh, here at Cockrell's Creek. And we picked up some ice there too. Now we're headed back to the boat before exploring some more. So we've come ashore and we're heading to the Reedville Fisherman's Museum where they have a replica of the boat that John Smith sailed up the Chesapeake to explore everything in. And they have a couple of other goodies. So we're gonna go check it all out. The houses here in Reedville have some really cool architecture. Like this little cutie. It's got a wraparound porch. Massive skipjack here was used for oyster dredging. And if you notice in the back, there's a little bracket and then this teeny tiny little dinghy. So the way the law was, uh, oyster dredging could only be done under sail by a non-motorized vessel. So what they would do is they would tie this dinghy to the back and then motor it out to where it needed to be. And then they would simply disconnect it and hoist the dinghy out of the water using the davits, and then the boat appeared to abide by the law. It was no longer a motorized vessel, it was a sail-driven dredger. And it would dredge downwind, pull up all the oysters it needed, and then they'd drop the dinghy back in, push it around, and do it again. So the little dinghy, uh, in this case it's called Spat, is the name of the dinghy, it's called a push boat. And this one has a very large Perkins diesel in it, which is huge for this boat, but appropriate for this giant uh, skipjack that it has here. Here at the museum, we can see some rope feathers. Apparently I'm not the only crazy person who would take an entire winter to make a set. <laughs> These are the real kind, they're made out of hemp. is based around menhaden, which are these little fish that are not really good for eating, but really high in oil. And they were telling me that the, the old story that when the Indians taught the settlers how to farm, and it'd be you put the corn in, or the, the seed in, and then you put a fish for fertilizer, the fish was actually menhaden because they're really good for fertilizer. So here on this wall, they actually have a display of everything that Menhaden is used for, from cat food to Rust-Oleum paint, uh, all sorts of things. So they aren't used for eating, but they're really, really useful for everything else. In the museum, they have this really awesome old sextant, and they have a trap for a log. So when people talk about a knot logger and all, this is what they started as. We've been seeing these random sticks kind of just sticking out of the water 
and surrounded by pelicans, so we assume they were some kind of fish trap, but now we get to know what actually is happening under the water. Yeah, so they have a, a little chart here that explains how it works. The fish simply come in to the area up here, and then they're funneled in, and then funneled in further where they can just be taken out. Mr. Walker, who was a fisherman, and he was given his choice of paying for a one fee for the house mm -hmm. for to pay by the you know hour day day I guess probably wasn't and so he took the the um, the fifty dollars to thinking that would be the best and he went yeah. out fishing early in the morning of course and came back and the house was it was this room and the room ahead but we always like to join area he is um, let's see any more questions oh you're gonna take now go a little to come in and work on boats Aww. and they, they to do in Reedville are go to the museum and get ice cream at Chitter Chats. <laughs> so here we are at Chitter Chats and we're going to have our ice cream. This is amazing ice cream. Absolutely amazing. So which flavor did you get? Mm. I don't even know. We had a really good day at the town. We saw the museum. We got some ice cream, just delicious ice cream. And now we're making dinner. We're stuck it's... here until Maria stops hitting us. Yeah. So Maria's supposed to be smashing into us Monday, Tuesday range, sometime around there. Uh, hopefully Wednesday she'll be away enough that we can then go. But until then, we're here. So we're, we're trapped. Making... So we're making the most of it, and uh, we're going to have a delicious dinner tonight. Yeah, so. that I'm excited about. We're having that amazing chicken... With the stir-fry noodle thing. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, so then after we saw the museum and the ice cream, then we relaxed in the hammock and watched a gorgeous sunset over a cloudless sky. Now here we are. And now we're here. Sweet potato. Somehow. And they don't require much water. They just go in and then turn the mush. They just like go limp and go away. So they don't need much water at all. Now, Morty and Maddie will enjoy their dinner. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're ready. Yes. So I'm actually heating up some chicken for Morty. And then we'll keep eating while we watch more of The Office. Next time on Sailing Wisdom, we talk about some useful tricks that we have either discovered ourselves or read in books that help us maintain a simple and easy lifestyle on a boat. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much.